My name is Reverend Denise Ion Stahura, and I'm happy to be here today to give Ramona a day of rest. Today's gospel gives us a story about how to worship God, about rules versus reality, love versus compassion and action. When Jesus heals the woman with the curved spine, the synagogue president rails against him for breaking the letter of the law of Moses. Why? Because Jesus is healed on the Sabbath, has worked on the Sabbath. Jesus rightly calls into question the president's understanding of the law and the true purpose of Sabbath. The synagogue leader is focused on the letter of the law, while Jesus is focused on the spirit of the law. The true spirit of the law is to honor God and show care for others. Interestingly, the Old Testament today also illustrates the same issue from a different angle. Earlier in the chapter, before our reading begins, Isaiah 58, Yahweh calls into question the practice of the Israelites in fasting and keeping Sabbath versus the true purpose of these actions. The Israelites are complaining to Yahweh, not paying attention. Why have we fasted and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? They think they're doing the right thing and are calling Yahweh to notice it and answer their prayers. In response, the prophet tells the people that their worship and requests have been observed, but not answered because the spirit in which they worship is flawed. It's not enough to practice the form of belief without the spiritual intent. On the day of fasting, Yahweh has observed that they do as they please, they exploit their workers, and end up fighting each other. In verse 4, the prophet says, You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. When fasting, people get hungry. And as a result, these Israelites got bad-tempered and quarrelsome. That's the opposite of fasting that is intended as a way of humbling oneself before the Almighty. The results for the Israelites were disputes and quarrels and violence instead of charity, love, and peace. These people were hangry, not worshipful. And we all know what we get like when we're hangry. Even worse, under the pretense of piety, the Israelites were simultaneously oppressing their servants, slaves, and workers. While bowing their heads and lying in sackcloth and ashes, the rich were using the poor as tools for economic gain. The rich got richer and the poor got poorer. This oppression resulted in economic inequity just as it does today. When the form of religion is followed without the accompanying spirit of love for others, God is not pleased. That's not how God calls us to fast. Even in ancient times, selfishness and greed got in the way of selflessness and charity, just like they do today. So what does Yahweh want? Here's what Isaiah says. Loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. Set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Share your food with the hungry, and provide the poor wanderer with shelter. When you see the naked, clothe them, and don't turn away from your own flesh and blood. Don't turn away from your own flesh and blood. Sure, that includes our families, but it clearly also says the rest of creation as well. Our neighbors are our families, and to worship God, we must care for others as we would our family. This was not new to the Israelites. They knew the law. They knew the saying from Leviticus that both the rabbis and Jesus considered a great commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. God calls us to help care for creation as part of our worship. Worship of God ultimately includes a broader definition of fasting, of giving of yourself, your bread, your house, as a counter to nakedness, hunger, and homelessness. It requires one to fast in multiple ways, to eat less, to feed others, restrict one's living standard to shelter others, and forego to clothe others. Love for others is the driving force. 
We have a liturgy as a way of offering ourselves to God. However, that's the form of our worship of God, not the implementation of God's love as we are called to do. We owe everything to God, and our daily lives need to reflect that fact. Intriguingly, this is the same message preached by Jesus in the New Testament today. In his very first sermon in the synagogue, you may recall that Jesus quotes the same Isaiah 58, saying, set the oppressed free. Jesus' message right from the start was to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. This social justice goal is the same one as in Isaiah 58. To give all to God, don't prioritize yourself above the needs of others, and honor God. Forgoing what we want in order to be of service to our neighbor is our belief put into action. Isaiah also discusses how to keep Sabbath. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride up upon the heights of the earth. Sabbath is a fast day, a holy day. The Israelites were called to cease from the daily business of life to focus on what God had done for them. They were to give the land a radical year of release every 50 years to allow the land to lie fallow and replenish and restore the land. Sabbath also addresses our modern insatiable appetite for more. Our conspicuous consumption of Earth's fine finite resources of land, water, minerals, and animals. Rather than an onerous task, this Sabbath fast is a time of liberation and hope for those of us caught in the endless cycle of acquiring more and more stuff. We are called to God's great mission of restoring creation to its full, fruitful function. A Sabbath fast allows us to free ourselves from retail therapy, from buying one more dress made in sweatshop conditions, from thinking we need the newest piece of technology that uses the minerals depleting the earth. What we get in return for all this fasting is a true sense of peace, an alignment of what we believe with how we act, people who are refreshed and a restored creation. Fasting is rest, as in taking a break. This isn't selfish, it's self-care for us, for our neighbors, and for the earth. The message from Isaiah that Jesus and the rabbis echoed is clear. Keep the Sabbath and honor God with appropriate actions. God will answer our calls, offer light in our darkness, and satisfy our needs, just as with the Israelites. This is the call to action that Israel needed in the 6th century B.C., and also the call to action that the church of today also needs. Even now, when the Bible is an open book for all to read, millions of churchgoers have not yet grasped that biblical faith is not concerned primarily with the saving of one's individual soul or with liturgical form. Our faith calls us to forgo ourselves for the betterment of others and for the earth, to rest on Sabbath, to pause, to pause our restless drive, our use of the earth, and our need for personal gain. Ultimately, our Sabbath fast is an act of caring for others and for the earth. May you have a restful and blessed Sabbath. Amen.